You're literally putting more money in your pocket by doing this without really changing anything. Hey, this is Sean with Weekend Trucking, and in this video, we're gonna dive into a business topic that is more important now than it ever has been. That is how to prevent the rising fuel costs from just totally eating up your profit margins. You know, whether you're pulling RVs, whether you're power only hot shotting, whether you're just hot shotting or, you know, hell, even a, you know, an owner operator, really, if you're a company driver, doesn't matter. You know, how can you prevent yourself from taking a huge loss in terms of money in your pocket? Uh, it, it's a lot simpler than you think if you follow some of the simple principles that I've talked about in previous videos along this trucking endeavor. So let me finish getting loaded up. Whether it is getting a, a Fillmore because you drink coffee every time you go to a truck stop, whether it's at Pilot, Flying J's, or TA's, whatever, you know? But, uh, you know, start thinking about how can I save while still doing the same exact things I do on a daily basis? Uh, because how you do anything is how you do everything. So let's hop in the truck and let's talk about how you can marginally adjust things to keep your profits up to fight this transitory inflation and rising fuel costs. So let's dive in to the super simple way that you can survive the fuel price hikes. If this is the first time you're seeing this video, you're tuning in, just a brief summary. So I am a former slash current gym owner who dove into RV transport during the plan <coughs> and had decided to take my payroll and my wife's payroll off the books so that I could continue to pay my staff what they were making pre. And that allowed for the pretty significant reduction we saw in monthly EFTs or, you know, in, in revenue. But because of the offsetting uh, payroll expense no longer being on there, no more payroll tax for my wife and I, uh, everything's been able to stay afloat. And along this trucking endeavor, I have just kind of fallen in love with trucking for a multitude of reasons. And maybe that's its own separate video. But so when I got into RV transport, I just had a, a pickup truck doing the single pole gig, had some issues come up and then had a subscriber to the channel and a fellow YouTuber, Hustle Hall and Tow. David sent me an email on the Freightliner that was for sale at the time as I was going through my truck issue. And financially, it just made more sense to jump into the multi-haul division because it was less to buy this and what it was gonna cost to fix my truck. And I would almost double the income that I'd be taking home. It's more about 75% increase, but significant. And so what I bring to the industry is not the traditional trucker cost per mile, pay per mile, way of looking at things, but just the business scope of, all right, what are the moving parts? How can we break things down to look at things from just a business standpoint? So if you haven't downloaded the trip analyzer, and this goes for any type of trucker that is in charge of their finances, in the description below, you're gonna see a link to a Google sheet, it's free. Uh, it's the trip analyzer that I initially started using. I've since updated mine and made it a little more robust and maybe I'll end up adding that by the time you click on the link. However, when you do click on it, I've had some issues when it comes to people trying to use it. Click on it, you could probably do it from your phone, but when you're on a desktop, go to file, go to save copy as or, or something along those lines. Essentially, you're making it your own. Otherwise, you'll never be able to edit the Google Sheet that I am sharing with you. You need to make it, save it as your own file, then you can change whatever you want. So from there, you'll see the different lines as far as what you're entering. And when you're on the spreadsheet, you'll notice little indents, little tabs or little pop-ups on certain cells. 
Uh, what that is, if you hover over it, or maybe if you just click on it on your phone, it's a note that I have on how to utilize that column or that section of the spreadsheet so that you know how to operate it. Because I have some formulas built in there. And so with that, you, you have your final payout. You know, again, whether you're a hot shotter, whether you're an RV transporter, whether you're a owner operator semi driver, which technically all of us would fall under an owner operator setting, just in a different sector of the industry. So you would put, you know, that trip, that load, your payout. And then what I do is for the trip, I tally up what my fuel cost was for that. Right over there, you're going to see a maintenance column. I have it set at 15%. And this is where this advice all hinges on. So it'll take 15% of your final payout for that trip or that load that run that you're on. So if you had a trip, a run, a load that paid you $2,000, it's gonna, once you enter that in on, on the payout section, it's gonna pop up $300 for your 15% maintenance. And then what your job is, is on the back end and your online checking, is to go and transfer $300 from your, either you have a business account or it goes to your personal account into a separate account that is you have titled your maintenance account. So you keep going over a little bit, you should see a profit margin. So it tells you how profitable you are per trip. And then it'll have the running total up top. You know, on average, you take home 65% of what your pay is what your gross pay, your payouts. What you've noticed, and I'll put a screenshot right here. What you've noticed is that last year, the years prior, you were more profitable. Your percent profit margin was higher than it is now. As you can see, these are mine right here. And so you notice that when it comes to your pocketbook. You know, you're like, hey, I don't have as much money going into my personal account, what the heck? So what you can do without really affecting too much of anything, is take that 15% and adjust it down some. So if you're somebody that's been in the industry, you have a good maintenance account set up. Uh, so like my philosophy on it, and I'm gonna have a, a separate video that I've yet to make on the retirement side, how can I retire as an owner operator in the trucking industry, is you need to know what number what your upper limit is for your maintenance account. And it all, it all is going to hinge on that. So if you feel confident with the amount of money you already have set aside, then adjust that. Maybe you notice you're, you know, 7% less profitable than you were last year. Go in and adjust your maintenance allocation from 15, maybe down to 10. Again, if you feel comfortable with where you're at or you're at your upper limit, where if you needed to buy a new truck, you already have the money set aside to be able to buy a new truck. So you can cover every major issue. Then maybe you adjust that down to 10 or 5%. Ultimately, what you're doing, and this is business talk, this isn't trucker cost per mile talk, is you're making your business, you're taking it from, if it's down to, let's say, 55% uh, profit margins from your gross payout, from your, you know, your, what you're making before any expenses, you're literally increasing your business's profit margin by 10%. If you're somebody that's younger or newer to, let's say, maintenance allocations and uh, maybe you, whether you've been doing it for five years, but you just kind of fly by the seat of your pants. You don't save money. You just pray that you got enough in your personal account or your savings or yada, yada. Uh, you know, you're new to the profit first. There's a link in the description for that book, uh, for the audio book. Um, but you're new to this practice of business. So what you would do is you'd be a little more conservative with adjusting that because you still want to stockpile as much money as possible so that if a major issue happens, you're building up a, a good chunk of change to take care of that. And that then that doesn't affect your personal life, your personal finances, because you already have it sitting over here in your maintenance account. So that that's the big tip. Go in and adjust it. You're still setting money aside, building, growing your maintenance account. So again, whether you use your maintenance account for just major repairs, or if you use it for major repairs and just your preventative maintenance it all comes out of there, you have an idea of how much you're spending on a monthly basis if it comes to preventative maintenance and it's coming out of that account. Uh, what you want to try to prevent is that account stalling out if you don't have it at your max limit yet, or it's just losing money and you're not replenishing. It's easy to get into that bad cycle 
especially when fuel surcharges haven't reached the compensation for what seems to be the overnight increases in diesel. But keep growing that. Another option that you can do, this would require you to go into, if you're using the spreadsheet to change some of the formulas, is I take that 15% from the actual payout. So I'm taking my maintenance percentage before deducting my fuel. You know, so on a given trip, it seems like now I'm averaging 800 to a thousand dollars a week uh, on a typical 2,000 mile round trip. So it, what I do is before I account for the fuel, I'm taking 15% out of the payout. A way that you could essentially, it's the same thing. You know, there, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, so to speak. Uh, sorry, PETA, whatever. I didn't mean to offend. Toughen up your skin. But you could go in and take out that 15% after accounting for the fuel. Same thing, you're just switching the mechanism of saving less to adjust. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do that. I would just adjust the percentage with how it's set up. And it's all just about being comfortable with the amount of money you have in your account already or the amount of money at, at which you're saving on a trip to trip basis. Uh, and then it, it just goes down to looking at, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. So little things from, am I just buying a disposable coffee every morning when I stop to fuel up or whatnot? Or am I doing the refill option with the, with the $6 cup that you have to buy up front? Again, I have a video on that. It breaks it down. It takes you six fills to well, now they increase the prices on that too, uh, transitory. But you're, you know, you're saving money. Are you? Do you have a lead foot? Are you just drilling the accelerator down when you're getting onto the interstate? Or uh, some great trucker advice that I had gained from I think it was Smart Trucking a YouTube channel. Older trucker has way more wisdom than you know the young guys. Uh, and I believe that was the channel I heard it from, but you know, thinking that there is an egg behind your accelerator, you don't want to crush the egg. So you need to gently apply it. Otherwise you're burning profit out your tailpipe because there's too much fuel entering into the system and it's getting wasted. Are you idling your truck at night? Uh, I've been idling when it's those single digit teens digits because I, I just don't want to have to worry about any potential engine damage when it comes to a cold start and my oil has gotten really low. I know, I know we can get around that. I got a generator. I could have my block heater plugged in, yada, yada. This time next year in my endeavor, I'll have a solar based battery pack system and potentially a diesel heater that will also serve as kind of a block heater or engine bay heater as well. I got a few things in the works for that. But is it ET Trucking, maybe, a YouTube channel? It has a big fleet, leases on owner operators and whatnot, but they do a lot of awesome detailed videos on the trucking industry and, and being more profitable. Talks about you spend a gallon of diesel an hour when you're idling, you know, so you're 10 gallons of diesel if you're idling it for the 10 hours. Well, that's $50 a night. You might as well go stay in a sleaze bag hotel. Just things to think about. Uh, really being checked into where you should be fueling up at, at the lowest price points and um, using little fuel stops to get you to the cheapest fuel that you know is in your route instead of like, oh, it's time to fuel up. I'm just gonna fuel up, it's expensive. But you could save 20 cents because you know your corporate card or your mud flap or whatever else you're using you know, says, hey, listen, if you can make it to here, you're gonna save 20 cents a gallon because of the discounts we have, whatever. Uh, so just being smart about it. But the biggest thing to, to just keep operating how you're operating right now, but become more profitable is adjust your maintenance allocation to whatever you see fit. You're literally putting more money in your pocket by doing this without really changing anything. The caution or the disclaimer is if you're new and you don't have your maintenance account built up to a level that you're comfortable with is be a little more conservative with adjusting that. 
So that's all I got. If you have any tips, strategies, uh, you know, anything to throw in, I'd love to discuss that and, and learn from you as well in the comments. So make sure to comment below. Again, regardless of what industry or what sector you're in, in the trucking industry, we're all feeling these unheard of fuel prices and there's a way to weather the storm. Uh, you have to just check in. You have to run your operations like a business. You can't just think that you're on a road trip away from the family enjoying, you know, the windshield time and the pretty skies. Uh, fueling up wherever you want, eating at the truck stop all the time. You know, and that's another thing. Are you, do you got a cooler or a 12 volt, you know, fridge freezer set up? Do you got the power inverter, yada, yada? There's ways you can save money and be extremely profitable compared to, you know, the, uh, the steering wheel holder that just is road tripping away. Uh, if you're a company driver, I don't think you have to worry about any of this, uh, but I could be wrong. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. I, I hope this was helpful. Again, comment below. I would love to learn some tips and tricks from those that have been out there doing it. Uh, you're not going to hear me talk about the cost per mile and like, oh, it's just, it costs my truck this much to run. Um, again, a gym analogy is that is like me only looking at my revenue from a cost per member, a cost per member standpoint. Well, in order to keep the doors open, I need to know how, what my monthly expenses are. There's fixed expenses and there's variable expenses. Your truck note should be a fixed expense unless you're leased on with enterprise. Your insurance is a fixed expense. Again, owner operators that are on their own authority, you've got some other expenses. If you're a 1099er uh, and you're using a company's authority and, and their commercial insurance, you don't have as many expenses uh, like us in the RV transport world that aren't their own company. Your fuel is a variable expense. You can break it down to a, a per mile all you want, but that depends on how many miles you do in a given trip. So to say it costs me 30 cents a mile or a dollar something a mile to run my truck. So somebody was, I'm at the gym. I thought somebody was pulling up next to me. I'm like, doing a YouTube video, leave me alone. But uh, a variable expense is not how you look at things from a business standpoint. It's the next layer. But the first layer and the layer that would uh, determine if you're going to purchase or acquire a new business or this or that. It's a simple P&L statement and you have fixed and variable expenses based off revenue coming in. We'll give you a profit margin. Your profit margin may change on a monthly, weekly type of a basis, but you're monitoring that and it keeps it really simple. So I, you can throw the the shade, the you know, the flack in the comments about, you know, me being an anti- I was gonna say the V word, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, an anti cost per miler trucker. Uh, it just doesn't make sense unless you're using that to analyze very specific points within your business to become more profitable. But it's a secondary layer of looking at successful businesses, just like it is in the gym industry, just like it is in any industry. You have your simple numbers that all industries use in terms of a P&L statement. And then per the industry, you can break it down into a more specific metrics, which then allows you to extract one thing and it will adjust your P&L statement. So again, hopefully this was helpful. Find the link in the description for the trip analyzer spreadsheet. Again, it may be the original one and maybe by the time you're watching this, it may have a few extra columns added, but follow this simple advice and you'll literally become more profitable. And if you're able to weather the storm without adjusting it, don't adjust it, you know, weather the storm. What you'll notice is this has been a less profitable quarter. It's been a less profitable year. But by making that one small adjustment, you literally change the profitability of your business like that. And you may need that if what you're doing right now is just getting you by and you're on the brink of like, I don't know if I can afford it or this or that. Make that small adjustment and you're instantly more profitable. And then also look at how you do anything is how you do everything. How are you 
attacking your meals, your prep for your trips? Are you idling your truck? Are there are there other things you can be doing to keep the money in your pocket opposed to throwing it out? So I'm gonna leave you at that. Comment below if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Uh, everybody that's been along for the journey, your support is extremely appreciated. And if you're new and you're wondering, you know, what, what's this channel about? I'm in the RV transport sector. So it's about making the industry, making RV transport more profitable. And then also just daily vlogs. Uh, tr really, it's like not daily vlogs, it's trip vlogs. Showing people just, you know, if it's not something, it's something in the trucking world. But everything that I talk about in terms of the business side of things, it applies to any business. It's not, oh yeah, that well that doesn't work because you're an RV hauler, you're not a, a flatbed or this or that. Business is business. It doesn't matter how the money comes in. It doesn't matter what expenses are going out, but it's having the business mindset prior to getting into the industry that allows me to look at things a little differently. It, it, at least from what I've gathered with conversations uh, with people that are new and have been in in multiple sectors of the trucking industry for a long time. So uh, you're gonna get that type of knowledge and then random, hopefully entertaining vlogs of watching a, a gym owner figure out how to be a owner operator trucker that likes to try to fix things himself by himself and and whatnot so until the next video guys stay profitable